Okay, so in, in the last video, this, this is gonna be the last video in this, this series. And in this video, I wanna introduce the idea of functions uh, within code. And like how variables are a little bit different between code and algebra, functions are a little bit different between code and algebra as well. So the, the fundamental idea of a function uh, within uh, coding, again, is not solving for something, but it's the idea is to encapsulate code to make it easier to reuse that code. It also ultimately will make it easier to understand that code because you can then have a name refer to a chunk of code uh, that is descriptive and you can have your code, your, you know, your ultimate code written at a higher level, talking about the big picture steps, and then each of those functions, uh, high level functions, have a lot of details inside them that you don't need to see to understand the code at the high level. So for a simple example, in the, in the last uh, video, we, we learned about what a for loop was, and we wrote some code that would go through and calculate a sum of squares. Um, and here, what I can do is now take that concept of code that calculates the sum of squares and encapsulate that into a function. And so if I want to reuse this in the general case, uh, I had some X, I had a specific X in that code before and a specific Y in that code before. But here I want to think about, in the general case, I would want to be able to do this calculation for any X and for any Y and then do this calculation here. So the syntax here. So first we use this idea, this word function to define that what we're writing here is a function. Um, we also are going to assign that function a name. So sum of squared error now instead of pointing to numbers is now pointing to a chunk of code. So Again, you know, computers store things in memory. In this case, it's storing a chunk of code in memory and it's using a name to point to something in memory, which in this case is a chunk of code. You know, so sum of squared errors is essentially just a variable name pointing to code. Um, within the parentheses here, I'm now defining what is being passed into the function. And we call the things that are being passed into a function the arguments. And that's a, a, a important buzzword to know, an important vocab word to know, because, you know, when you look up uh, functions and you try to understand what our functions are doing, uh, there, you know, there's lots and lots of our functions. Uh, you need to, you know, they'll reference that these are the arguments of the function. And you need to understand for any particular function, what are the arguments? What are the things going into the calculation? Um, and they're just separated by commas. I can have, a function could have zero arguments. It could have one, it could have two, it could have hundreds. Generally, it wouldn't have hundreds. Generally, it has a handful. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of functions that don't have any arguments at all or just have one or two. Um, the idea of uh, curly braces are the same. That encapsulates what's inside the function. And now at the end of the function, we have this, uh, this term here, return. Uh, and that tells the computer what to send back out after it runs the function. So this tells what goes in, x and y, function x and y tells what goes in. Return z tells us what, when we're done calculating, what do we spit back out of the function? So you kind of then view, okay, sum of squared errors here is a box, x and y comes in, goes into the box, z comes out. And at that point, if you understand what it's trying to do and what goes in, what comes out, you kind of can start ignoring what goes on inside and you encapsulate that away and abstract it away and make it easy to reuse that. We then can call functions. So when I call a function, I can pass things into the function. So here I'm passing w in three point, uh, sorry, 5.3 into the function. Um, so What's going to happen is whatever is pointed to by w is now inside the function pointed to by x. Uh, y now points to 3.5. And so inside the code, you know, y re references 3. Point, inside the function, y references 3. Point, uh, sorry, 5.3. 
and x references whatever w was pointing to before. So now x inside this function, x and w are pointing to the same thing. Um, and we call functions by name. And you know, this idea of calling functions by name and using parentheses, we've, essentially we've already seen this. That's what if was doing, that's what for was doing. Uh, and we'll, we'll see this a lot in R as we start kind of building up our understanding of, of a lot of built-in functions uh, that exist within in this language. Uh, and then finally, I just want to emphasize again this that this idea of, of what things are called inside the function versus what things are called outside the function is, is this idea of scope. So outside, if I've, uh, so I've been writing some code, the things that I'm passing in you know, have some names that are outside the function. And then when I'm inside the function, I don't reference those things that are outside of it. I, I reference things by the name of what they're being passed into. And really, if functions then act as the building blocks. They allow us to build up more complex code, recycle code. And, you know, for example, right now in R, there are over 16,000 different R packages. And each of those packages usually contain dozens of functions. So there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of R functions out there available for your use. And it's important to emphasize that Learning R is not a matter of learning those hundreds of thousands of different functions. It's a matter of um, learning the basics, what we've just covered in these last few videos, the real basic concepts, um, and then also learning how to learn. So learning how to look up uh, functions to solve problems, figuring out what goes into them, figuring out what comes out of them, and figuring out how to use them on a need to know basis. So, you know, you, you know I'm constantly you know, searching the R libraries for a function to solve a certain problem or, you know, to do a specific type of calculation. And some of them be, will become familiar to me and I'll reuse them a lot. And some of them, I'll, well, you know, I'll just need to find them once and I'll use them and I'll never use them again. Um, yeah, so that, I think that wraps up our, our general introduction to R. And then this will uh, lead us well into to next week where we're going to start talking about how we can use uh, the co concepts of coding to dive into working with data. So uh, manipulating data, organizing data, managing data, visualizing data, and just basically the idea that, you know, we live in a world of big data and computers help us uh, process that data. And um, ultimately, there's so much different types of data out there that uh, we, you know, often can't rely on pre pre-existing tools to process it. We, we use code uh, to allow us to process data and manipulate data uh, in, in novel ways. Um, thanks.